Hi, this is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog on green building and building science. Behind me here is a 10-year-old house here in Westlake, which is a suburb of Austin, Texas. And this house, uh, even though it's 10 years old, uh, the owners, when they just they just closed on it recently within the last 30 days, called us and said, hey, this, this house is really an energy hog. The previous owner's bills were uh, over $1,000 a month in electricity in the summertime. And they said, hey, what could we do to make this house more energy efficient, really to green up the house, so to speak? And uh, as you can see, the house is pretty large. It's about 5,700 square feet. Uh, so it has three AC units, 12 tons of cooling capacity. And it's, it's really the summertime heat that is, uh, is really the most concern here in, in Austin. And there's two main things that my crew is doing today that I'm going to show you on this video. Number one is we're, uh, we're taking the insulation from a, a very traditionally insulated attic and we're moving that uh, insulation to my favorite type of insulation, which is spray foam on the exterior shell of the house. So you're going to see uh, that in a minute. And then we're also changing out the heating and cooling equipment uh, to much more modern and very efficient equipment. And we're going to show you a little bit about that as well. In the meantime, let me show you over here. I don't think I've ever shown you on my video blog before what the spray equipment looks like. So uh, you've seen me show spray foam. Spray foam is a two-part uh, component. It's a polyurethane-based product, and it takes a pretty complicated uh, setup to be able to spray it. It's not uh, that can that you see at Home Depot for uh, eight bucks a can. This is the spray rig that uh, my insulator uses, and as you can see, it's, it's a pretty fair amount of equipment. The, the white uh, cans you see here, those white 50-gallon drums, are part B. The red cans are part A, and those have to be mixed together. And they also have to be maintained at a specific temperature. I'm not sure what that is, but it's something like 120, 130 degrees uh, coming out. Then there's a huge compressor, obviously, back here to run the whole setup. And then uh, there's also a couple other pieces of equipment. The guys that are spraying it are going to have a full face mask on, and they need fresh air when they're spraying. Uh, we don't want to breathe this in. And then there's a really high PSI pressure rig that everything comes together in right here. So. Uh, it's a pretty expensive uh, rig and setup, and of course the chemical, those 55-gallon drums of the chemicals are pretty pricey, and that's really one of the one of the main things that drives the price on spray foam being much more expensive than traditional insulation. So let's walk up to the attic now, and let me show you what's going on. Okay, so now we're in the attic of that same house I just showed you a minute ago, and this house, as I mentioned before, is a 10-year-old home built relatively uh, recently. And uh, it was built by a reputable builder in town. So the things I'm going to show you here are not necessarily the builder's fault, per se, um, but were fairly standard practice 10 or 15 years ago. And uh, so what we're doing here is going to make a huge energy uh, boost or energy efficiency boost. One of the problems that this house has is they came in and insulated on the flat uh, section with fiberglass insulation after the house was built. And you can see there's huge voids in the insulation here underneath where this AC equipment ran. The fiberglass installer just didn't have good access, and he left it out. And then uh, one of the other big problems is you can see this insulation is just stuffed in here. There's huge gaps and voids. And also, if we pull this out here, you can literally see daylight around these boots. This is a supply boot. This is probably the exhaust fan coming out of that bathroom. And uh, not only those areas are leaking conditioned air between the house and the attic, but all these wire penetrations, any duct runs, all those places are, are places where conditioned air, that you spent money to air condition it, is filtering right up through this attic. And uh, it really makes for a very inefficient attic. Uh, or, or really just using more cooling than you need to to cool the house. So what we're doing in this house now, as you can see behind me, is he's spray foaming these cavities right up against the roof line like you've seen in my other videos. And what a huge difference this is going to make for energy efficiency on this house. That spray foam seals uh, all the air penetrations as it expands. And we're only spraying in five and a half inches up here, so it's not necessarily that we're increasing the insulation by a huge amount, but we are uh, totally eliminating all that air infiltration between this attic and the house that we worried about before, and now we're not worried about that. So this attic is going to run much, much cooler. So now the heating and cooling equipment up here is going to run in an attic that's probably no more than about 10 degrees hotter than the rest of the house. So if my client set the thermostat at 75, this attic should really be no hotter than about 85. And what a huge difference that is going to make for the heating and cooling equipment. Most attics in Austin are 120, 130, maybe even hotter than that 
on a typical 100 degree heat uh, day. In fact, it's, it's pretty hot up here today, and it's probably only low 90s. I bet this attic's probably 110, 115 today. So one of the nice things about the spray foam is we're conditioning this attic. It's also going to allow us when we replace this heating and cooling equipment. In fact, uh, there was a unit sitting right here on this platform that's gone now because we're about to replace that. Now we can actually go down on the tonnage. So we're going from 12 tons on this house down to uh, 10 and a half tons. And we'll also change one of the units into a two-speed uh, unit so that it can run on low speed at three tons or kick up to high speed at five tons. So in reality, this house could be cooled most of the time with about oh, uh, eight and a half tons. And if it needs that extra boost to take it up to ten and a half, we've got the ability to do that. So we're, we're, I would be willing to bet we're going to increase this house's efficiency by 30, 40, maybe even more uh, percent per year. And uh, I think it's going to make a huge difference for these clients. Thanks for joining me up in this attic. Let's go outside in a minute here, and I'll show you the, uh, the new AC equipment we're putting in.